All right, you guys, I have another review that I wanna do for you guys of a really special fig variety. It's called White Triana. It's quite a large fig. This one here has dried up uh, really well in the tree. I just found it. I said to myself, my God, it looks so good. I haven't cut it open just yet, but I imagine it's amazing and I have to get this on camera because I haven't reviewed this variety in quite a few years. Um, this is really a favorite of mine of 2018. Uh, last year in 2019, we had it in a pot and I decided to air layer a number of copies because I love this variety so much. Um, I sent one uh, air layer to my friend Danny. Um, I uh, air layered one for myself and actually planted it right here. I think I planted this tree um, from air layer the beginning of this year, so May. And it's grown to um, a ridiculous size. It's a very vigorous variety. I've always found this tree to be very prolific. It's very vigorous and uh, it also puts out a lot of fruit. So it has that nice combo that we kind of look for, not just being productive, but also being a quick rower and productive at the same time. Uh, the mother tree that was in a pot, I also planted that in the ground. And that was in, I think, a you know, like a seven and a half or 10 gallon size. And that tree's also grown pretty well, but it looks about the same as this right now, oddly enough. So uh, even planting something that's just well rooted as a one gallon size pot, you'll basically have the same size tree, uh, it seems. So I was really surprised to see that, how well this one grew. I was able to pinch this variety um, about 90 days ago, probably a hundred days ago. You know, we're now, um, Probably sometime around June 15th is when I went around and, and pinched this particular fig. Uh, it does produce roughly within 90 days after pinching. It's a, a mid-season variety. And to give you a little history on it, just real quick, before we go into all these characteristics about it, is that it originally comes from a, a grower that used to sell a lot of fig trees um, on the internet. I think his website was italianfigtrees.net and it was a guy named Joe Morley that lived somewhere north of me and he would sell uh, a couple varieties one was the white triana that you see here another one was the black triana and uh, no one was ever really crazy about these varieties they haven't really taken off in the fig community they never really got a whole lot of attention um, Black Triana is just really a, uh, a Columbaro Nero or a Sal's Corleone red Sicilian type fig that uh, I never really paid too much attention to because that kind of fig is never going to really do well here. But this is one that's quite similar to th something like a, tri a Triano, um, you know, Lyndhurst White. Um, you know, there's so many of these varieties. Unknown Mitica is another one. They all look very similar. Even Canadria is another one that I've reviewed in the past. They look so similar to this fig that they're all of a similar type. And I don't know why that is exactly, if this is something that happens genetically. I have this theory that a lot of seedlings will just end up looking like this, this style of fig. Um, because, you know, Condit did some breeding and got Canadria. That was one of, his, uh, one of his projects. He was trying to breed a better Calamurna fig, which is the standard for dried figs throughout the world. And uh, he bred Canadria. And I have a feeling that when you breed figs, it just, in my opinion, maybe it has something to do with the, the capra fig that he was using or the capra figs that he was using. But I imagine a lot of them end up looking like this because I have found just in people's collections, in the hobbyist community, you know, many varieties of figs look just like this variety and it's really quite strange. But they're not all created equal. I'm gonna break off a, a leaf here for you guys. You can really easily tell by the, the leaf pattern and that this leaf pattern will just have of course, the five lobes to it. 
but you can see this and they're kind of a little bit more elongated like fingers almost but they're quite fat and then they always have this up here and sometimes you'll see this back here which are i don't even know what to call these but this is really your typical canadria leaf too this is your typical atriano leaf this is your typical you know like you might see this on like something like sicilian white or yellow lebanese i mean there's so many of these figs that look just like this that it's it's kind of scary um so i've always been interested in these because um there had to have been one that was really good and i found this one to be reasonably good years ago and i just stuck with it and i'm glad i did because i think it's a really tasty fig it's really um in my mind when you can get them perfect like this when they're dried up shriveled up on the tree I wouldn't say dried, I would say shriveled up. This is like a giant ball of, of honey. We'll see what this one tastes like. I'm really quite curious myself, but, um, you know, I think when these are perfect, they're almost like a mid-season col de dame, like a mid-season col de dame blanc. Um, and that's what I referred to this as two years ago. And I thought to myself, you know, I wanted to plant this one in the ground. Um, Reason being is that it has a very, very long hang time. So this is the big issue with this variety, unfortunately, is that it needs to hang on the tree for like 12, 14 days before it gets to this point. And that's in a pot. I don't know if the same thing can be true if it's in the ground. Is that going to be, you know, that 12, 14 days, is that going to go down to like eight or nine? I don't know. And I wish I was out here keeping track of this. I didn't even know this fig existed until just now so i have no idea what the hang time is but that's been really my experiment with this fig and why i planted it in the ground because i don't think necessarily it's the greatest option in a pot um just because of its long hang time and that's here i'm talking about um you know the figs that i value as i've talked about the highest fruit quality possible are figs that can dry well on the tree, so that's a check, or it can be really rain resistant, split resistant, as this variety is. It rarely cracks, it rarely splits. It really does well in terms of moisture. Um, and then of course, if it has a, you know, a good drying capability, of course it's gonna have those things. It's gonna have that rain resistance, that split resistance, um, a high enough bricks. The other thing we look for if it's going to ripen at an earlier point of my season so that I can get it at a higher quality, right? Because even though it's, you know, September 21st here, this isn't really the best time to be ripening figs. Um, really, it's in the early August or mid-August. So this fig in a pot would ripen around mid-August, and uh, that would be a good time to get this. Um, and then the last thing I look for, really, is the hang time. Because if the hang time is really short, um, there's a lot less that can happen to this fig. So if this has to hang on the tree for 12, 14 days before it gets perfect like this, then there's 12, 14 days where something bad can happen versus let's say a six or seven day fig. Uh, I have some figs that even take three or four days. If they're only on the tree for three or four days, there's a lot less that's going to be able to happen to it than this that has to hang on the tree for 12 or 14 days. So for that reason, growing them in a humid climate, a climate where we get a lot of rain or just some bad weather event that could happen, I find it would be very likely for something bad to happen to this. And I got lucky in that nothing did. And I don't know how consistent, by planting it in the ground here, I don't know how consistent results I'm gonna have with this particular variety um, because it has a longer hang time. Is the hang time going to be shorter because I planted it in the ground? Is it going to show different characteristics because I planted it in the ground? I think the answer is yes, but I don't know for sure and we still have to weigh the options. But in the meantime, I've kind of held off on this variety. I've held off on really just how amazing it was because we didn't get many last year and I didn't think I was going to get any this year. but. And we still have to evaluate the hang time. But let's try it here. I'm going to cut this open. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> quite something this big. Uh, it really is underrated. Uh, I swear to you. And there's um what separates it I think from other types of this is that you can really have um a thicker, denser pulp that has more berry flavor to it. So there's the inside, guys. It is really just a giant sack of gel and thick and dense pulp, which is really why I, I lend this to a Col de Dom. People don't, when you think about Atriano and, and Lyndhurst White and Laterola and you know, yellow Lebanese, Sicilian white, all those green figs, yellow figs that are big and have like an amber to pink pulp to them, like this one does. Uh, you just don't think about a Col de Dom. You don't. But this one I do. I find it to be very thick. And, uh, you know, my friend Big Bill has been into these figs as well. Um, so Big Bill in Lancaster has um, put a lot of time and research into these types of figs as well. And he came to the conclusion that he really liked Unknown Mitica, which is a fig that uh, a guy named Art had found. And uh, he says that one is the thickest. And I thought, whichever one's the thickest and has the best rain resistance will probably be the best one. But I wonder about the hang time on all of them, is that they, they really do, for whatever reason, just seem to need a very long time to hang on the tree. And if you pick them early, you pick them early, this fig is not going to be good. It's not going to be nearly, I'm not going to rave about it nearly as much as if I waited as long as I did here. I don't know how long that is, but if you don't wait this long, you're not going to like this fig. So you have to be patient. And uh, that's why I think it has a bad rap and that people don't go for this fig for, for that reason. So let's try it. Yeah, it's quite good. Man. That is just so good. It has like the most, it's not as thick as a cold Dom, just simply in the fact that there's so much honey in this. There's so much nectar that this fig produces. I mean, you can really tell how that glistens. There's so much nectar in here. Um, but it's also really, really jammy and thick, which is kind of a, a contradiction in itself because usually the figs that really have a lot of that syrup in there, a lot of that nectar, the nectar can be of different, you know, I guess degrees of, of texture because some of the syrup is really liquidy and really loose and um, almost like water, you know? Whereas you have some other stuff here that really is as thick as honey. Like honey's really thick and slow. Like molasses pours really slow. So some of them vary in like how loose they are and how thick they are. You know, how much are they like water or how much are they like, you know, honey? And this one I find is really, it's really a, the closest nectar that I think you can get in a fig to honey, unless it was dried up. Maybe if this was dried up a bit more, and I, maybe that's why I'm getting that, that thickness to it. Because the pulp is already quite thick. Maybe if there was a lot less nectar, it'd be even thicker than, uh, than I would think, or than I think right now. It does have like pretty large acnes to it, the flower parts. So I don't know. I think it really, it shines really well with that nectar and it's therefore it's very sweet. It has a good melon flavor to it. It's a melon flavor that stays no matter how much it ripens. The melon flavor will be there um, it does have a berry flavor, but it's not like a really intense berry flavor. It's still, I would say, a light berry, a fruitier berry flavor. Um, still very melony, figgy, 
Um, you know, it's, it's a sugar fig, it's a honey fig, it's a melon fig, and it's a, a slightly got a berry flavor to it. So for all those reasons, you put all that together, that's a pretty complex flavor. That's a pretty complex fig um, that in my opinion just doesn't get a whole lot of credit. It really doesn't. Um, so that's white Triana here, guys. Um, I could talk about, I guess, more about the tree, but what you need to know, I think, is that it's mid-season, probably reasonably hardy, I would argue, and um, very productive and also very uh, vigorous at the same time. Has really large leaves like this that usually do really well um, in making it a very vigorous variety. So. Anyway, guys, I, you be, you, I think you're going to be surprised next year at how much fruit this thing actually produces. And it didn't even get, um, by the way, any head start at all. I planted a one-gallon size air layer in the ground in May, and now it's fruiting in September. So it's a really, really uh, good sign for the overall performance that this tree is going to have in the future. Um, I really do believe that. It isn't a very warm spot, but... Uh, you know, all my figs really should be in warm spots. Anyway, guys, uh, we will talk to you guys soon, all right? If you enjoyed this one, uh, let me know. I don't know how many more reviews I'm going to have of some of these figs. There are some special ones that I'd like to get around to, but it depends a lot on if we can get a good representation of the variety. And um, this may be one of the last ones that we do for the year. But uh, I really wanted to talk about some of the really special ones that I grew or I grow. And uh, I think we did that really well this year of capturing almost all of the really, really highly respected varieties that I like. Um, so we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Take care.